And now we will begin with remarks from Dr. Spinrad. Thank you, Jasmine, and good morning, everyone. First, I want to make sure and thank everyone for joining us today for the announcement of NOAA's 2022 Atlantic hurricane season outlook. It really is a pleasure to be with you today. Mayor Adams, First Deputy Commissioner Farrell, and FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell, with whom we've developed an extraordinarily effective working relationship. Thank you for that. And I've got to say hello to Commissioner Bray, my old friend as well. Hello, Jackie. Particular thanks to the New York City Department of Emergency Management for hosting us here at this site today. Let me take just a moment and set the stage if I can. We just experienced two extremely active hurricane seasons, marking the first time on record that two consecutive hurricane seasons exhausted the list of 21 storm names. If you go back two years, the 2020 hurricane season broke records across the board, and it's the most active season on record with 30 named storms. The 2021 hurricane season, which is the third most active year on record in terms of names of storms, brought us 21 named storms with impacts ranging from the Appalachian Mountains all the way to New England, resulting in over 78 and a half billion dollars in U.S. damage. One of those storms, Hurricane Ida, of course, made a huge impact right here in New York City. Hundreds of miles north from where it made landfall, a still powerful Hurricane Ida brought astounding record-breaking rainfall amounts up to nine or more inches in an extremely short amount of time to much of the tri-state area. Despite early and dire warnings from the National Weather Service, stellar preparation by our partners, the severe flooding resulted in 27 direct drowning deaths, and many of which took place in historically underserved communities. Hurricane Ida emphasized the vulnerability and consequences that tropical cyclones can bring to our coastal and inland areas. But we are encouraged by the continued coordinated efforts of federal regional, state, city, and local partners to rescue, recover, and rebuild after these events, and as equally important, develop hazardous weather planning and mitigation efforts ahead of the next, which will ultimately lead to a more weather and climate-ready nation. And a decade before Hurricane Ida, Hurricane Sandy brought a devastating five to eight foot storm surge to this region brought tropical storm force winds, which damaged hundreds of thousands of homes, caused tree and power line damage that resulted in some residents going without power for one to two weeks, resulted in at least 65 fatalities in the tri-state area. On a personal note, I'm a New York City boy myself, and that storm resulted in the permanent displacement of my then 95-year-old mom from her apartment in Manhattan and incidentally resulted in more than $80 billion in damages. And of course, that storm wasn't unique. Other notable storms that have impacted the tri-state area included Gloria in 1985, Hurricane Donna in 1960, and Hurricane Carol in 1954. These storms have taught us many lessons. One of the most important is that it's never too early to prepare for the devastating impacts of hurricanes. And while we're here today to preview an outlook of what trends will shape this year's hurricane season, it's crucial to remember that it only takes one storm to damage your home, neighborhood, and community. Preparedness is key to the resilience that we need, and now is the time to get ready for the upcoming hurricane season. So now let's talk about the upcoming hurricane season. NOAA is predicting an above normal 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, which would make this year the seventh consecutive above normal season. Specifically, there's a 65% chance of an above normal season, a 25% chance of a near normal season, and just a 10% chance of a below normal season. 
For the range of storms expected, NOAA calls for a 70% probability of the following ranges. 14 to 21 named storms with top winds of at least 39 miles per hour. Of these, 6 to 10 will become hurricanes with top winds of at least 74 miles per hour. And of these, 3 to 6 major hurricanes ranked as categories 3, 4, or 5 with top winds of at least 111 miles per hour. Let me say a word about the accuracy of the forecasting and how NOAA's forecasts have improved in recent years to better predict the storms and protect life and property throughout the hurricane season. Since the year 2000, we've seen a 57% improvement in the average 72-hour National Hurricane Center track error in the Atlantic Basin. This can be attributed in part to NOAA's flagship weather model, the Global Forecast System, incorporating things like drop sonds, and Hurricane Hunter flight data into its analysis. Our improved track forecast has allowed us to more accurately pinpoint the area most at risk, which reduces the size of areas that may need to evacuate when a hurricane threatens. This improvement is illustrated in the National Hurricane Center's track forecast cone, also known as the cone of uncertainty, which represents the probable track of the center of a tropical cyclone up to five days out. The cone of uncertainty has gotten significantly smaller since 2005. We've also seen improvements in our intensity forecast. Forecasters can now more accurately predict changes to hurricane intensity early in a storm's life cycle. The National Hurricane Center's average intensity error is now 40% lower than it was in 2000. Looking ahead, NOAA will triple our operational supercomputing capacity for weather and climate this summer. This upgrade will allow for more detailed, higher resolution Earth models that can handle larger ensembles of models, meaning more numerous calculations, more advanced physical considerations, and improved capability to assimilate the data collected out in the storm. Along with the better science, will ultimately make way for better hurricane forecast model guidance for years to come, which is what the forecast of forecasters, of course, rely on. So before I close, I'd like to make, take a moment to give a special thanks to the skilled and dedicated forecasters at the National Hurricane Center in Miami who work around the clock to deliver timely and accurate forecasts each and every hurricane season. Better systems, better sensors, better satellites, better aircraft, of course, are critical. It really boils down to the people who make the forecasts, as well as the hurricane hunters, both ours and those of the U.S. Air Force Reserve out of Keesler Air Force Base, who fly hundreds of hours each hurricane season to support critical hurricane forecasting and research, and the numerous members of the emergency management community who are so critical to protecting lives and property. And last but not least, the forecasters at the National Weather Service forecast offices around the country who work year-round to provide weather forecasts, watches, and warnings that the entire nation can depend on. I also want to call out the experts at the Climate Prediction Center who develop the seasonal outlooks, run the models, assimilate the data, including the hurricane seasonal outlook, which are used as a tool by decision makers and planners and emergency managers and the public when planning for the season ahead. So with that, I conclude my remarks. It is my pleasure now to turn it over to Mayor Adams. Mr. Mayor. Remember the good old days when you're lucky if you have one camera to hear this forecast. Uh, now we're glued to the TV. We're worried about hurricane seasons because now the hurricane seasons, they have taken an entirely new meaning. And we are concerned about not only the damage to property, but also lives lost. And we have to refocus to this new reality of dealing with uh, the change in our environment and how it impacts us every day. And let's be clear, this information is vital and it's crucial. It's crucial for the men and women who are assigned here, uh, both the commissioner and the deputy commissioner and this entire team, 
because it allowed us to be prepared. And we cannot thank our federal partners enough for giving this information in a timely fashion, using technology to predict uh, what is about to happen and how the inclement weather uh, could impact our daily lives and responding to emergencies. And this is not new to New York. Uh, we know 10 years ago, Hurricane Sandy uh, hit our city. Uh, we remember the catastrophic uh, flooding that submerged our city and 44 New Yorkers died during that storm. As a state senator moving throughout the entire area, we saw how it impacted us. And just last year, uh, the remnants of Hurricane Ida uh, caused uh, torrential rains and flash flood flooding that killed 13 New Yorkers in basement apartments. Uh, I remember being out that night, uh, moving around the uh, borough and city, and saw the Brooklyn Bridge flood for the first time in my entire life, and that sent a clear message. So when it comes to uh, coastal storms, hurricanes, and floods, uh, pre preparation is everything. And today, this announcement is allowing all of our agencies uh, and New Yorkers uh, to be prepared. Uh, that's why we are here today with partners um, from NOAA, FEMA, and the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services. It's going to take real partnership uh, for us to combat uh, these unprecedented levels of storms uh, that we are seeing in our city and in our entire country. And I want every New Yorker to be ready uh, because once we are giving the information, once the agencies are in place, it's going to come down to New York is also participating in this partnership. Uh, New York has six uh, evacuation zone areas that may have to be evacuated in case of severe uh, flood uh, issues. Uh, zone one includes those communities most at risk uh, especially low-lying uh, coastal areas and waterfront communities. And zone six is a lower area, a lower risk. But knowing your zone could have you prepared when the information is put out. And every New Yorker should know their zone. Uh, I know my zone, City Hall, is zone six, and Gracie Mansion uh, is not zoned. And we are going to do our part uh, to make sure that every New Yorker is using a mapping system will know exactly where their zones are located. Second thing that's important is preparation. Proper planning, uh, share with friends and families, have food, have supplies, have go bags, and particularly if uh, your loved one uh, may need some form of medicine, uh, you should be prepared to have it in a go bag or ready to put in the bag. Uh, listen to the warnings and make sure you let your neighbors know exactly if they are not aware of the urgency of a particular storm. And know your neighbors. Uh, this is a moment where we should know each other, particularly those who are elders or shut in. Uh, we should make sure that we check on them and have a line of communication. We can do it block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, partnering with our community boards, our faith-based institutions. We're going to do a briefing with all of our faith-based leaders as we move into this season to ensure that they're part of the deployment plan. New York City, we know we have the best uh, emergency management team anywhere. In fact, uh, they leave here and they move to other levels. Uh, FEMA Commissioner, Commissioner uh, Chris Well, came straight from her role as the Commissioner of New York City Emergency Management Office. Uh, we have the best, and they move to higher levels uh, in their profession. And our New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services Commissioner Bray, Bray came from New York City's emergency management background as, as well. We continue to move through the system and help the entire country, if not the entire state. Uh, with the leadership and the help, uh, we together can ensure that we save the lives of New Yorkers and be prepared. We must be smart, we must be safe, and we must be prepared. And no matter what happens, uh, uh, FEMA, uh, Homeland Security, uh, Office of Emergency Management, we have the backs of New Yorkers in the state. And so I want to now turn it over uh, to our Deputy Commissioner here, uh, Commissioner uh, Farrell. Commissioner? Good morning. 
I want to welcome everyone here to New York City Emergency Management and to the city's Emergency Operations Center. Even though it's very full, I think we prefer it here with press than filled, uh, you know, after a storm. I want to thank all our partners, including Dr. Springrad from NOAA, Deanne Crispo, FEMA Administrator, and our former commissioner. Welcome back. Uh, Jackie Bray, the Commissioner of New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services. Joanne Ariola, who's the Chairperson of the New York City Council Committee on Fire and Emergency Management. And of course, Mayor Adams. I also want to welcome a very special person who's with us today, Faman Ahmed. He's a ninth grader at Nest High School in Lower Manhattan. He's our Commissioner for the day. He won an essay contest from Essays Across the City and he is the future of emergency management. So we were very happy he would take a day off from school and join us. Um, as emergency managers, we know that preparedness will save lives. Through our work, we make sure we help all communities safely and equitably, equitably to prepare for and recover from hurricanes. As has been said, we, can, we see that one storm can have a devastating impact on New Yorkers and their communities. We know hurricanes won't wait, and neither should you. With the start of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season just days away, you can be prepared, and we encourage you all to take the first step. And as the mayor said, please know your zone. If you live in one of the six evacuation zones, you may be ordered to evacuate for your own safety by emergency management and by the mayor if a dangerous storm is approaching. If ordered to evacuate, it is vital that New Yorkers follow city officials' guidance. It's very easy to find out what zone you live in. You can visit nyc.gov slash knowyourzone or you can call 311. More than three million New Yorkers live in the city's six hurricane evacuation zones. To encourage New Yorkers to know their zone and prepare for hurricane season, we are once again running our Know Your Zone awareness campaign. Starting next week, New Yorkers will see new Know Your Zone ads on bus shelters, bike pumps, storefronts, online, in newspapers, and other places across the city. But even for New Yorkers who don't live in hurricane evacuation zones, extreme weather, as we have seen, can impact. Make sure that you stay informed with emergency information during hurricane season and throughout the year. The best way to do that in New York City is to sign up to receive emergency updates from Notify NYC, the city's free emergency alert program. It's available in 14 languages, including American Sign Language. So please visit nyc.gov slash knowyourzone for more information, including how to sign up for Notify NYC. Thank you, and it's my privilege to introduce Deanne Criswell, FEMA Administrator. Thanks, Christina. Uh, good morning, everybody. First, I'd like to uh, recognize Administrator Spinrad. Um, our partnership has been excellent uh, during my time in office and the relationship that FEMA has with NOAA really helps us get the information out to the public so we can make sure that we are helping people before, during, and after disasters. And I'd like to say how great it is to be back here at New York City Emergency Management. Seeing my old colleagues um, has really been uh, just such an honor to remember serving here and to be able to come back now in this role. Um, I couldn't be more proud of the amazing work that New York City Emergency Management continues to do every day to help New Yorkers. And Mayor Adams, thank you for joining us today. It's great to see you. Um, and thank you for your ongoing commitment and support of New York City Emergency Management. Um, they do so much good for New Yorkers. As you heard today from Administrator Spinrad, uh, we're looking at another similar season um, for hurricane preparedness. But that doesn't mean that we should take it lightly, right? As we saw from Hurricane Sandy or Superstorm Sandy, um, it doesn't even have to be a hurricane to cause such devastation to communities. And so for years, the predictive weather data that we've gotten from NOAA has really helped us, helped FEMA um, in our ability to um, support critical decision making, and not just at FEMA, but also at the state and local level. That predictive modeling that they put out and the accuracy that they've been able to improve over the years has made our jobs easier in helping to get information out and warn the public when they're facing these threats. So whether we face three storms or 30 storms, um, I'd like you to know that FEMA, we are ready for this hurricane season. 
We are going to continue to maintain a very strong forward leaning presence. We want to be able to make sure that we are putting personnel commodities and equipment in place before the storm hits so we are ready to respond and support the communities that may have been impacted by the storm. We have our commodities pre-staged, ready for rapid response operations, spanning from the Pacific to the Caribbean to the Eastern Seaboard. And we have thousands of expert response personnel at the national as well as our regional level that are ready to support life-saving and life-sustaining operations. So my question to the public today is, are you ready? We must not forget that just last year, Hurricane Ida made a nine-state destructive trek across the United States. It affected coastal, urban, and suburban communities. This shows me that no one is immune from the effects of these tropical storms. So FEMA has an urgent call to everyone, a call to action for everybody that lives in these areas. The time to get ready is now. As this year marks the 10th anniversary of Superstorm Sandy, which although again was not classified as a hurricane, it brought devastating impacts. So there, there are actions that you can take today. The first one, know your risk. It's incredibly important that you understand what your and your family's risk is. Again, as we saw from Hurricane Ida, from the coast to the Midwest to the Eastern Seaboard, people had impacts across nine states. Know what your risk is. As you heard from Christina, First Deputy Commissioner, know your zone here in New York City, but across the U.S., know what your risk is. Once you know what your risk is, then you can make a plan to protect your family. It's really important to better understand what your unique risk is going to be and put that plan in place for if you have to evacuate, where are you going to go? How are you going to communicate with your family and your loved ones? What do you need to take with you? Sign up for emergency weather alerts. You heard how you can sign up for them here in New York City, but you can also download the FEMA app and get up to date um, wireless emergency alerts. And then finally, and I think one of the most important pieces that I can share, is listen to your local officials. Listen to them when they tell you to evacuate or shelter in place. It's incredibly important that you follow their advice because it's also going to protect you and your family, but it will also allow our first responders to continue to do the important work that they need to do. And so the first thing, or the most important thing that I will ask everybody, is that prepared families are safe families, and a prepared nation is a resilient nation. So uh, listen to your local officials, know what your risk is, and make that plan to make sure that you can protect your families. Thank you.